everyone. Today we're going to be returning to our PLC programming example of a palletizer and what we'll do is use the palletizer with drum instructions in order to accomplish the same thing we did with just straight logic. So if we look up at our screen what we're as a review what we're doing is stacking boxes on pallets. In this case here we have um, two layers on a pallet. We can also stack up to four. You'll notice that they are intertwined so that the um, the boxes are more stable within the skid itself. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll just quickly review the uh, five steps. The first thing is defining the task. Then what we'll do is we will define the inputs and outputs. We'll then develop a logical sequence of operation and then develop the PLC program. And in this case here, unlike the last time, we'll actually be using um, drum instructions within the BRICS PLC in order to control our palletizer itself. And then the last step is actually the um, testing of the program. So lots of testing, and this is this is part of what uh, factory I.O. that we're going to be using is really good at. So that's what we're actually doing is uh, putting boxes onto skids. And what we do is um, we typically will use some sort of uh, a logical diagram or a sequence of operation. Here's my table that actually shows um, what I'm trying to accomplish. And I split my table up into my palette and what my palette has to do and then my box layers and how to build those layers. So that helps tremendously when you're sitting down and trying to develop the code that you want in your PLC. So if we take a look at exactly what we have connected here, um, I have my Do More software actually connected to my USB port located right here. I then have my factory I.O connected uh, through my Ethernet port which is located right here and it's talking uh, Modbus TCP IP and the factory I.O. acts as a client so it's communicating um, the controls back to the BRICS PLC so it's initializing and uh, doing all the commands to get the information in and out. So here we have our um, uh, unit itself and we have our control buttons, we have our start, stop, reset, um, we have our manual auto, then we have the layer count that we can uh, select up to four. We'll select two so that we can see these boxes actually um, quicker in operation. And this tells me how many boxes have actually passed. So we'll throw that into um, automatic mode and we'll hit start. What you'll first see is that our pallet will come through and as soon as it hits the front sensor it actually then lifts that elevator up and we are actually then providing boxes onto the layer and what you'll see is it'll get six in the in a row then it will there's a clamp mechanism and then the elevator plate will open and depositing the box onto the layer the layer the the elevator then goes down and prepares the next layer. You'll see now that we have a flipper and the flipper now turns around and does the next layer the opposite way. So it interlocks the boxes together so that it performs a better uh, pallet itself. Then once we're done with that you can see that now the elevator drops down. It brings it out and sends it along its way. Meanwhile, we have more of the skids coming back up here, building up the next layer. Our next uh, pallet comes in and we're, comes up and it starts um, building up the next layer. So that's the order and sequence of operation. If we actually look at the program itself, we have our start stop and right now we can see we're online, we're communicating. And there's my start light and my warning light. That's that flashing light that you saw previously. Then what we have is a pallet control, the pallet. So as the pallet comes in, this shows me what step I'm on. And this is basically just filling in the blank. You click on and off those steps and you can see how the plate opens, it closes and it waits the next one. When everything's done, then it sends it on its way and then it comes back to start again. You'll also notice that we can do a manual jog and the jog is when it's we hit the start button when it's in uh, manual mode. 
you'll notice that we can then jog the, the situation. Next what we have is we have resets and this is the overall reset for the previous jog statement. What we do is we move the value 1 into our v0 and v0 if we go back to the jog here is actually our, se our step preset. So when we reset this uh, drum where it resets to in our case here 6. So what we do is we build a, a layer up we let it go and then we then we if it's not done we go back to layer six until all the layers are done then we can move down through the sequence and exit the elevator so that's our skid the other reset is actually our layer itself so when it's not done we reset to the step number six where we uh, build up the next layer then what we have is our drum um, will actually turn on bits on and off so sometimes they're normally closed when they should be normally open or vice versa. When we see that, what we have to do is create internal bits and that's what these next two rungs are doing. Then what we do is our drum mechanism actually creates uh, standalone bits. So you'll see here we have pallet feed bit, um, load pallet bit, and they control our feed and our load controls as the drum um, energizes them. We also have our exit and this is our exit um, being done and it turns on and what we have is a um, an off delay or a, a delay timer it's an off delay timer we make sure that elevator the exit elevator conveyor is on for at least 10 seconds in order for that skid to get out of the way then our, we have our elevator controls we have a, a move limit an ele and so and we have an elevator up and an elevator down what the uh, move limit will do is when we have it triggered with the elevator up, it will go all the way up. When we have the move limit on with the elevator down, it moves all the way down. If we want to just move down one step or up one step, we would signal, signal the elevator up or elevator down just once. So that is our elevator. Then we have our number of layers on the pallet. Here we uh, um, this is our counter, so it counts the number of elevator, a number of uh, um, layers that we have on the pellet, and when it reaches the preset value, which in our case here is set for two, then it will um, count up or count down, and and that is exactly what our counter done bit will do. Is says that we have then mounted on our skid, so now it exits or, or allows that to feed into our drum mechanism, and we count those based on their plate opening. So when the plate opens, let that layer in, that's when we count. Then we have a um, another drum, and this drum actually handles the 2x3 layout of our, of our pallet. So this is the 2x3 uh, uh, layout, and what it will do is you can see here that we push one, two, three different times in order to um, trigger. So you can see right here, we're on our second um, of the three, and we're on the third of the three. Again, once we, we do the reset, then what we do is we, um, we use this counter, just the value of two, and that's what we'd use to feed into that counter, or into that uh, drum mechanism, in order to count the two every time. So then we have a three by two. So again, we've broken up the sequence um, of laying these layers out on our PLC um, with two different drum instructions, one to do the two by threes and one to do the three by two. And the three by two, you'll see that again, we have three boxes coming in. And so we have pusher one, pusher two, so that, that creates that layer. And then we have a plate or a layer done bit that comes on with the drum telling us that our layer is done. Here we utilize a counter with a preset value of three, that basically tells us when that uh, three boxes have they have been done, so that we can do the pusher. Then what we do is we have our box present and our open plate. Again, internal bits that we need. We then have a a turn. So when we activate the bit in our um, drum mechanism, we have the turn, and it will turn that box for us. Box feed box load, a push. So basically it's all bits now that we are actually um, turning and based on our sequencer, either the event or the time um, allows us to control um, what's happening within our cycle. 
Then we have our increment for our layers, and then we have our box counter itself. And you'll notice here that we have a three second delay before it actually resets our total box count. So if we go back to our factory IO, we'll see what's happening here. And we have the first layer done on the skid. We have the second layer coming in. And that's finishing the layer. It will now um, do the clamp, go down, close, and now go all the way down and exit the conveyor. Now we'll bring the next skid back in again. And we can now build up that next layer up. So drum instructions are very uh, easy and straightforward. It's almost like a plug and play. You determine what you want with events and times and it will um, help you um, quickly develop code within your PLC. Now all the links and documentation can be found on our, our website at accautomation.ca. If you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.